yo, yo, yo. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Happy you guys are here. Should be a fun show. Um, gosh, I feel so off my game today because I did not have a lot of prep time for the show, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. You guys, welcome. Hope you had a killer weekend. Um, welcome back to Lou Reviews, the destination for critical thinking in the realm of the unexplained. Um, today, we are going to be covering the fallout of the web of UFO internet edgelords that coordinate targeted doxing, harassment, humiliation campaigns against those they deem unworthy of the UFO discussion. Um, these independent groups consist of extreme UFO believers who encourage conspiracy theories over facts. Are these edge lords just acting on their own, or are they being directed by a sinister group allegedly led by Lou Elizondo? We try to break this down and a few other stories that happened over the weekend as well. So, you guys. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, as you can see, I've got a uh, pinned um, link there. So if you guys want to join us here in the second half of the chat, um, you know, if you've had an experience with a UAP mic or a Cosmic Dahlia or, you know, a King Milk Fart or any one of these folks, uh, you know, that have been targeting her harassing and just giving people a really hard time simply for asking questions in most cases um and especially uh when you ask questions to their heroes boy oh boy they get very very upset um but before we get into that stuff i wanted to talk about a couple of other um uh, things that have happened here over the weekend and uh, let me get to my bookmarks and we'll go there. Let me go ahead and turn this back up here for you guys. Um, yeah, there was more stuff I wanted to look at. Uh, I've been looking a lot into Billy Carson <laughs> after the episode we did on Friday. Um, and I was reached out by uh, a certain gentleman uh that uh told me about someone who also had a very very interesting experience when it comes to billy carson um and i also yeah came across some other videos and stuff um where yeah I, the the biggest thing here that i keep hearing about this guy is his lawyer, his fancy lawyer, and how anytime you talk about this guy, get ready for a letter in the mail, essentially, um, and, you know, a, a suit coming your way. Here's the thing, and this gave me a lot of confidence when it came, comes to talking about Billy Carson, because when we were talking about him last week, we were basically covering just the archaeologists sort of calling him out on the archaeological lies. Um, and someone in the chat had mentioned, oh, yeah, he went to, f he went to prison for fraud. He did not go to prison for fraud. Um, we're going to get into it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> there are... Uh, let me see here. Where should I go? So I'm going to pull this clip up right here. And I've got this guy's link in the description below. Uh, his name is, uh, gosh, what was it? He does a, basically a financial channel to, to help people get out of debt, uh, rearrange their, you know, their financial infrastructure, um, uh, when it comes to personal wealth and things like that, he's very legit. He's very, um, you know, he's a certified CPA, he's an accountant and he's a financial advisor and he takes calls and, um, you know, none of his stuff is get quick, rich schemes and he does not cover scam artists. That's usually not his thing. If he comes across a scam, while he's either talking to one of his clients that he does personally, you know, outside of YouTube, whether he's giving advice on YouTube and he comes across one of these scams. Uh, so 
this gentleman, uh, who again, the, the name of the channel, sorry, I have it here is pocket watching with JT. I've got the link in the description below. Um, and the deep share sent me this little other YouTube clip that he made on YouTube. Um, I don't have the link for this, but if you go to his channel, you'll find the same video. Um, in the six minutes, he really breaks down Billy Carson amazingly well. But what I learned about Billy Carson is that's not his real name. <laughs> his real name is Billy, or excuse me, William Tyrone Carlson with an L and a K. Um, and turns out that William Tyrone Carlson is from Florida, like me. <laughs> He's been uh, in a few um, interactions with the Broward Sheriff's Office, which is BSO. It's Fort Lauderdale, basically. All of Fort Lauderdale. Um, and so there was, you know, in this, in these videos, in these breakdowns, he, <laughs> you know, he finds William Tyrone Carlson. Because here's what happened is one of his clients came to him and said that they lost $8,000 investing in a crypto currency, a cryptocurrency that belongs to Billy Carson, along with a whole bunch of other wares that he sells. He has water that says that uh, stops the aging process. He's claimed that he's 65 years old. <laughs> he was born in 1971, as we will see here in a second. Um, so once you get his real name, looking up his, his record is really easy. So there's a couple of things, uh, you know, this guy wanted to do primarily get his clients money back. They lost $8,000 investing into Billy Carson. And so once this person explained everything that happened, uh, JT went and started doing his research. Okay, who the hell is Billy Carson? Found out, um, you know, came across the exact same things we came across when we went to his website. Uh, the only thing that we I, I didn't get to address, and neither did he, is the Rolling Stone connection. <laughs> but... The other things that he brings up, I think, are incredible. So um, he starts digging into this guy, finds out he's from Florida, find out, finds out that he's changed his name. And here's the name change right here that he did on March 28th of 2018. Um, and he changed it from, again, William Tyrone Carlson II to, and when you click on this, uh, Billy Carson. Okay, nope, not a big deal. Everybody does that sort of stuff all the time, right? Eh. They do that primarily when they're starting. And <laughs> sometimes people also do this when they start a new business and they don't want any of their past catching up to some of the things that they've done. Oh, gosh, I forgot to say hello to everybody. Sorry, I had my, my chat hidden here. Uh, this is one of the funniest comments I saw <laughs> in the pre-show. KMF flipped a table in my lab once. We lost some element, element 115 thanks to that jackass. <laughs> If you want to come in and tell that story, I'd love to hear it, Bob Lazar. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, just hello to everybody. Dana Shadell, M. Kelly, my members here, Simon Fly, What's Shaking, Bruce Wayne, uh, who is here for uh, a, a live show, I think, for the first time in either a long time or, uh, oh, here it is. Um, finally caught it live. Watch all the time. Lou, thanks for calling out all the BS. Bruce Wayne, thank you. And I will not reveal to anyone that you are Batman, but thank you for being here. Um, and thank you for the support. Uh, Stone Day, you know, the usual crew, Bobby Broadway. All you guys, thank you for being here. Okay, sorry. I digress. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so, right? Changes his name, not a big deal. Now, let's go to the... Okay, so we, we've got... Three traffic infractions here, and this is something that uh, JT didn't look into. I was curious what the traffic infractions were. So two red light violations, and I think the other one was a parking infraction. But the thing that stuck out to me, that to me is one of two things that verifies this is that William Tyrone Carlson II is also Billy Carson, the, you know, archaeologist, Egyptologist, 
Anunnaki uh, advisor and spiritual advisor and financial advisor now. Um, <laughs> this is what stuck out to me right here is the license plate number. Anunnaki. <laughs> okay, so that's not proof, right? Totally not proof that that's definitely, definitely him. Um, yeah, okay. They're also, and just keep in mind, there are also mugshots. <laughs> Um, but here's the thing, right? So here's the third degree, uh, felony and the third degree felony was basically a fraud charge. It was a credit card, a uh, fr- credit card fraud. Uh, he, he, do, 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 if I'm not mistaken, it was uttering a forged instrument. So basically used a fake ID to open up a credit card account, racked up a whole bunch of bills on it and then didn't pay it and got caught. Um, And so the, he basically pleaded, he changed his plea from not guilty. Okay. He had written a plea of not guilty and then changed his plea uh, and got, uh, so let's see here, written plea, not guilty jury. Uh, reason uh, to change the plea, change of plea, nolo contender, <laughs> uh, adjudication withheld, provisions. Okay, so here we go. So sentence, 326, 2014. So he he taught, he basically pleaded guilty and, and reduced his sentence. And the he got, a pro, he got one year of probation, community control with a judicial officer, Robinson Michael. Now, there was one really funny thing in here. Um, and again, apologies. I didn't have a lot of time to set up for the show. I was looking at this stuff over the weekend. Uh, but there is <laughs> a uh, request here uh, to have a certain time off for vacation that he has to Egypt. <laughs> it's like so funny, dude. Um, God, where is it? Do, 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 do. Is it in here? Here it is. So pro- special provisions. Defendant sentenced under sentencing guidelines. Comment. Defendant is allowed to travel between dates of May 1st, 2014 to May 16th of 2014 to Egypt. <laughs> so he gets that window where he's allowed to travel outside of the country. The court knows about it. His probation officer knows about it. Um, so here we got a license plate Anunnaki and we've got the trip to Egypt in the middle of his probation. So he served, uh, the start date was three, it was supposed to be from 326.14 to 326.15. He only um, served till 9.11.14. Motion to modify sentence, change reopen status. So he only served, what, five, six months? of probation, basically doing credit card fraud. Okay, you know, no big deal. It happens like, um, you know, like you're young, you do stupid stuff. It doesn't mean like everything you say is a lie, right? Um, Not everything, (laughs) but once you add all of these other things here, so now here's right here, this is the latest thing. And so this is where this guy comes in. Where'd he go? There he is, uh, JT. And so JT is trying to get his client that $8,000 back. And he's doing research on the person that he invested that $8,000 with. And basically sued him. Or or threatened to sue Carson. So uh, I didn't sue. I think, yeah, they took him to court. So here it is right here. The U.S. National Bank Association. Um, da, 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 and it was an attorney that was retained against William Tyrone Carlson. Um, let's see here. There was a payout. It says, I think it was $8,001. Yep, here it is right here. So civil cover sheet, amount of $8,001. So this is the exact amount that JT talks about in his video covering 
uh, what he was able to recover from Billy Carson. Because after after we're going to play this little shorter version of the video, where'd it go? Um, there we go. Um, we're going to play the shorter version of the video and fair use. Uh, this is uh, we are. We are educating the public on the videos we are covering. This is covered under fair use and allowable by law. Uh, but again, we've got the link for uh, Pocket Watching with JT in the description below. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for, it seems like pretty decent financial advice for someone who's not trying to scam you. <laughs> this is a great channel. You could call in. You don't have to subscribe to anything. Like it's, you know, it seems, he seems like a, you know, pretty cool guy. But again, it's financial advice. Uh, you know, do your research before you just invest money into stuff. I don't think he's asking anybody to invest in things. I think he's more of a, let me show you how to manage your money kind of thing. So if that's, if you're looking for that kind of advice, I would go check out JT. Um, but let's check out this clip because the, the thing that happens after this clip is Billy Carson then sends the attorneys, right? The, the fancy attorneys, everybody gets scared. Everybody backs away but not JT. Uh, let's listen to this right here. This is epic. Stop making examples out of people because I can. See, I have the financial, so he says I'm not a good financial person, I'm not a financial this and that, but guess what? I have the financial means, I have unlimited resources at my fingertips and I will use them. And we are gonna take care of business. We are gonna square up. My attorneys <laughs> will square up. Lawsuits will be filed. Let's see how many more videos he's gonna make. Oh, let's see how many more videos he's gonna make. <laughs> hey, pocket watches, it looks like Billy cried to YouTube to get my videos removed. Let's go. <laughs> this is Pocket uh, Watching with amazing. JT. Let's do a quick recap for all of you new Pocket Watchers out there. A few <laughs> weeks ago, I made a video about the expert in space aliens, Mr. Billy Carson, because I believed a client of mine was scammed. Because they were influenced to buy an $8,000 <laughs> cryptocurrency online course, and it made absolutely no sense to me. When I asked them, why would you buy an $8,000 <laughs> online crypto course? Basically, they said, because it was endorsed by Mr. Billy Carson. And I was like, who is Billy? I project myself outside of myself and I talk to myself when I'm speaking. That's what I do. So right. I decided to right. look up Mr. <laughs> Billy Carson. And surprise, surprise, I found a man who had several interactions with the Broward County, Florida's court system. Which we just showed you. In businesses <laughs> and personal. So I made a video. And eventually... After my video got a bunch of views, my client got a refund. But Billy is still a little tight. Billy's upset. <laughs> he wants my videos gone. Right. I just got does. an official notice it's from incredible. YouTube that Billy Carson wants my videos removed. And he made an official request to take them down. As you can see, YouTube. Copyright infringement notification confirmation. Thank you for submitting a copyright takedown request. Your request will be reviewed to make sure it's valid and includes all required elements. In your request, you have asked that we remove the videos and prevent any copies from being uploaded in the future. When I first saw this, I was confused. I thought Billy said he was going to sue me for defamation. Hmm. But what probably happened was his attorneys explained to him that truth <laughs> is a defense to <laughs> defamation. Right. See, if someone says something about you that hurts you financially, you can't sue them for defamation if it's true. So this has to be plan B. Plan B, get JT's videos removed for copyright infringement. Billy, what did I take <laughs> that was copyrighted? So here you can see A what photo. Billy says <laughs> I stole from him. Dear YouTube, thank you <laughs> These for guys, your email man. seeking Where have we seen this move before? Where have we seen this move before? 
Sean Cahill much. King and Milford to much. To the grounds on which takedown notice was issued in the first place. We confirmed that the uploader, pocket watching with JT, <laughs> of the following three videos use copyrighted press photo of our client, Mr. Billy Carson, <laughs> without seeking prior permission. And thus, we insist on removing those thumbnails. Really, Billy? Your picture? That's why you're trying to get my videos removed? You can't get the video removed by claiming that I lied because all of my information was based on Broward County records. So you're trying to get the videos removed because I used your photo in the thumbnail. <laughs> Here is YouTube's response. Yep. Hello. Thank you for your message. However, we remain concerned that your copyright notification is not valid for some or all of the videos identified in your notification. As a result, the content will remain live on YouTube. Right. Sincerely, <laughs> the YouTube team. Sorry, Billy. Looks <laughs> like the YouTube copyright court denied your claim. <laughs> I love this dude. <laughs> Even though you lost your copyright case, I'm a stand-up guy. I'll make you an offer. This is if incredible. You want me to this is your incredible. Official press photo from the thumbnails in my videos. All right. Just tell me which one of these three pictures I can replace it with. Mugshot number one, <laughs> mugshot number two, or mugshot number three. You choose Billy Carson. Which one should we do? Mugshot one, two, or three? I mean, you want to talk about sticking the landing on a YouTube video. This is it right here. Like, and this is how you combat people like Billy Carson. And here's what's incredible. In the video that I included down below, and again, we're not going to go over all of this. We're not even gonna go over all, much of any of it, but please go check out this. I'd say it was about an hour and a half breakdown of everything Billy Carson. Um, the Harvard certifications and the MIT School of Management are certificates. He did not go to Harvard and he did not go to MIT. <laughs> he did Free online courses in the case of Harvard. Uh, I can't remember if that's the case for MIT. Either way, he might have paid for either one of these classes, but they were they were certificate classes. They weren't actual university accredited classes. They were basically we one weekend for like six weeks, and then boom, you get a certificate and you're good. And then he puts that on his website as credentials, as bona fides, as this is why you should listen to me when it comes to Egypt. This is why you should listen to me when you should invest $8,000 into my cryptocurrency. This is why you should listen to me when I ask you for an investment to invest in forbidden, uh, forbidden knowledge, you know, TV, you know, streaming app or whatever he's doing. So one of the things that he's done to sort of fund this charade is he's opened up a business and then he's taken out a line of credit and then given himself a loan with 0% interest on it. <laughs> and he's free to use that money however he sees fit. And so, you know, again, go look at his website and these are the things that these this money is being spent on. You give yourself a line of credit against a, a, your business 
and you can hire attorneys to scare people to stop talking about you. But if you talk about him in the right way, if you bring the facts to the table, he can't sue you for shit. The best he can try and do is take down your video because you used a copyrighted, you know, image of him, which is the same things that Sean Cahill has done here. It's the same thing that King Milkfart did as well. A publicly shared photo that people have seen and you're claiming it's copyright. Okay, fine. We'll just change it to an animated photo then. In in the case of King Milfort. Uh, you know, in the case of Sean Cahill, he just lost that one. And we also put googly eyes on that one. <laughs> you know, but like there are simple ways around it. But these are the tactics that these guys will go to 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 hear Pete to prevent people from hearing the actual truth about this guy. And what's great about this two hour um live stream that he did is he took live calls and and the great thing is is that there were people who hadn't heard about billy carson and he explains the vulnerable people particularly to scams like this are older people older people you know but retired people that are looking to sort of make an investment and and you know maybe go on an even longer cruise <laughs> you know um, and instead they get scammed and they lose $8,000. Now, can you imagine how many people out there have been scammed by Billy Carson that have given him $8,000 that have not gotten their money back? This guy, this is how you know this guy, JT, is a stand-up dude. He got, he went and got that money back for his client. And that $8,000 is right here. That's what this suit is. They did it through the bank, I guess, because that's he proved that it was fraud. The investment into the cryptocurrency was fraud, and that's what it is. It is fraud. It is a scam. And the court said, yeah, you're right. It is a scam. And you got to give that investment back plus a buck. <laughs> plus a buck. You know, which is... You know, I don't even know if this is the actual client. Um, this is just the, yeah, this is the, the, the bank actually sued them. So once they, the bank was made aware by JT, then they was like, okay, yeah, we'll, we can get this back. <laughs> we can get this back. No problem. No problem. And that's exactly what happened. And, and, and the only reason why it happened is because the story was starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And instead of taking a PR hit, Billy's like, okay, for eight grand, okay, we'll give this eight grand back. Who cares? We've got, 150 other suckers that have already bought into this or however much he uh, I think he puts it on his website how many people invested in, into this stuff which is insane you know like it's insane it's insane um so yeah I wanted to touch on this a little bit um and yeah there's this one part here too I wanted to play this is what I'm asking myself what did Billy study and it <laughs> seems as if Billy studied neuroscience at MIT, <laughs> in ancient oh. civilizations at Harvard. But when you investigate it, when you look at it a little harder, you'll see that it was certificates, <laughs> right? Certificates. <clears throat> and I said, hold on, what the, a certificate in ancient civilization? A certificate <laughs> in neural science? All right, well, let's Let's dig into this a little bit. All right, here we go. <laughs> Pyramids of Giza, ancient Egyptian art. I said, okay. All right, well, you know, what does it take to get this certificate, this particular certificate? What, what would it take for me to be able to claim that I studied ancient civilizations at Harvard University? Apparently, it takes absolutely no money the course is free online course for free and it takes about eight weeks you know six to eight weeks you can get it done in eight weeks it's <laughs> self-paced two to four hours a week two to four hours a week hold on <laughs> really two to four hours a week in eight weeks that's not a whole lot of studying 
Not at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. So it's a free course. It's a free online, course. Eight weeks long, two to four hours a week. All right. So that's that certification. <laughs> you know, so if you want to see, like I said, an hour and a half of just straight going through every single detail of the of this case and who Billy Carson is um, and how he runs these scams uh, and and his, you know, the these lawyers um, that, you know, he, he goes on to tell the story about how he received the letter from the attorney. And then he called the attorney like 15 times to get some clarification on this, to be like, OK, hey, let's uh, let's set this up. And it was in, it was almost impossible to get in touch with these guys. Um, so to anyone out there that's afraid of, you know, sharing their Billy Carson experience, don't be. And like I said, I was reached out to you by someone after the show to reach out to someone who had uh, an experience with this. And I'll be reaching out this week. Uh, this weekend was was pretty busy for me. But yeah, I do not have a problem people coming on this show and sharing their experiences with Billy Carson. So if you do have an experience, get at me. Feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter at Lou Angeles, L-U Angeles, uh, just like the city. Uh, but instead of an A, it's a U. Uh, also, real quick, I just wanted to shout out um, any doction, any duction, any duction for subscribing seven hours ago. Appreciate it. And also Sunshine X XXOO also subscribe. So thank you for that. Um, truly appreciate it, you guys. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else did we want to get into today? Ah, yes. This was incredible. So I saw this over the weekend. Uh, Kurt Jai Mungle, who everyone, um, including my, I, I am pretty friendly with Kurt. Uh, I haven't spoken to him in a while. I'd say probably about six months. Um, he's a very, very thoughtful person, and he doesn't react to things like I react to things. Um, he, I think, thinks about everything that is said and everything that is listened to as a chess, not, he, he thinks of it, from so many you can just see his brain calculating the questions that you ask him and all of the different possibilities of how to answer this question and then he carefully gives you an answer um he for the last i'd say almost two years almost two years about when my show ended is when he really started ramping up his UFO interviews and centric shows. And you started to see, I pointed this out on my show a while ago, um, but you started to see that his show was starting to lean to toward it being a UFO channel. All of the most viewed content on that channel on theories of everything were the UFO episodes were the talking to the um, you know, the Linda Moulton house, the, the, well, he just spoke to Richard Dolan. Um, yeah, just did an episode with Richard Dolan. He's spoken to Lou Elizondo and Sean Cahill. He's spoken to them all Ross Colthart, all of them. Um, the only time that he's asked, um, let's say the only time he does it every show where he gets questions from his audience, to ask his guests. And there was a time where he was taking questions from Steve Cambion and he was getting Linda Moulton Howe on. And I'm sure everyone has seen this moment. Um, I don't know if I could, but eh, you know what? Might be able to find it again. Sorry guys. I didn't have a ton of time to prep for this show today. Uh, there was some crazy stuff going on this morning. Um, and I just, yeah, couldn't get to it. But let me see if I can find this clip. Um, basically, you know, Stephen and I... <laughs> uh got in two questions that literally 
provided one of the most wonderful moments I've ever seen. Um, let me just look it up by the transcript that I've ever seen in uh, ufology. <laughs> um, shit, transcript. Control F. Okay. Let me go back to the video game part. <laughs> okay, so, yep, I found it. <laughs> I found it. This is worth playing. This is worth revisiting again. Okay, but before we revisit that, let's just get to what Kurt said, because this guy, again, you've seen him sort of lean toward this UFO thing, because I think he sees the numbers. He sees how it spikes when he talks to these people, and the questions are always about theories, their philosophies, their what-ifs. But the problem is, is that it's never... There's, again, there's no warning label with this stuff. You know, people take these conversations that Kurt has, especially with Lou Elizondo and those kind of figureheads, um, and they they base an entire belief system on these words. Like they they they, and we'll get into it. They harass people. They dox people. They um, they coordinate with each other. Um, they fort. They 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 create groups cult groups that attack people when you dare question these theories or these philosophies or these what ifs that were said on your show and it's tough to see that as Kurt, like Kurt's not a ufologist um, I know for sure because Kurt has said on his show that he's had a pretty wild experience where he had the he had to call the authorities because he thought he was going mentally insane. And I think a lot of it had to do with just being overworked. Um, so anyway, that's all to say that, you know, this guy is really thoughtful. He really, he cares. I think he does care about being curious about this topic. I think he cares about treating it with care because when this moment happened with Linda Moulton Howe, he felt really bad. And he reached out to me. I was like, dude, you shouldn't feel bad. Like, I think that exposed her, that exposed the, the, the fraud <laughs> that exposed the lie. And he, I think for anybody who's watching that, and has a really high opinion of Linda Moulton Howe, but they also have a good, I don't know how both are possible, <laughs> you know, a good square shoulder on their head where they're at least rational, right? Like they, they can rationally deduce things. Watching this moment, like, I think it, it, it made a lot of people go, oh shit, she can't answer these two simple questions to a point where she's like walking off the show and providing this insanely awkward, what feels like 15 minutes of silence. It's like solar eclipse log. Like it's speaking of the solar eclipse, like I hope everybody's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, all to say, like, again, I, I do like Kurt. Um, I'm glad that he's finally starting to see the things that I think a lot of people have been, telling him i know i've sort of hinted at it you know i've asked questions that he doesn't he doesn't take questions from cambian or me anymore <laughs> he just doesn't which is which is unfortunate because i think a lot of the times when we do ask questions they're the most liked and he used to ask the most liked, the most the most sort of uh elevated question either through likes or retweets that was the question that would make the show and uh you know, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, lately it doesn't feel like there's an emphasis on sort of really getting to the core of this, but it turns out he was listening. <laughs> he was listening, but I think he was also doing his own research and he was experiencing these people firsthand and then looking at this as a whole 
Is any of this sounding familiar? Looking at this as a whole and going over the red flags and going over the questions that you keep asking in your head that are just not getting answered. And then talking to the people that are pitching this stuff as reality. And I know for sure that he reads comments. I know for sure he does. So I know without a doubt that there are skeptics that are asking him, hey man, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, why aren't you asking these questions? Why aren't you, especially with Kurt, Kurt can formulate questions so delicately and, and do it in such a respectful way where it doesn't come across as, you know, um, ingenuine or disingenuous or, um, you know, uh, hostile in any way. Like he, he's, again, he's a very mild mannered, sort of same level monotone, doesn't go high, doesn't go low. It's very level. And this is what he had to say uh, this week and, you know, with this tweet, stepping back from the UFO topic and then included this video with it. So my last UFO interview, well, sorry, my last interview with a UFO bigwig was eight months ago. And in part, the reason for the lack of frequency with these with this topic is because I've I've backed away. I've backed away. Why? Because I'm I'm disappointed and I'm dismayed. Hmm. So the reason is that there's always the promise of some tangible governmental or scientifically sanctioned data that's just around the corner. There was the rumor of 40 new whistleblowers coming forward. It never panned out, but even if it was 140, then it's the next question is, so what? Because there's only so much that that talking can do. And I see that I see acrimony developing in the in the people who are involved in the scene. So my last UFO interview. I can't wait to see this whole clip. I think this is going to be uh, uh... I think it's a much longer clip, but he did put this out. Um, yeah, that sounds and feels familiar. And of course, the response to this is like, you know, listen, to Bryce Abel, I'm sorry your experiences make you feel that way. But for me, I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I love Jeremy. And he's, uh, but I don't agree with him on this. Like, ufology is filled with hoaxers and grifters. That's true. I agree there, unfortunately. So it's important to ignore anecdotes and speculation and so-called whistleblowers and just follow the science and the money. I agree that you should follow the science. I think it's almost impossible to exactly follow the money. You can get ideas. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, to me, Department of Energy, that's where I would look. But anyway, before you go, com before you completely give up on this topic, you should have me on your show as a final UFO guest. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but I would, I like Jeremy. He's, he's a really smart guy, but he's not a qualified physicist. And he will tell you that doesn't mean he's wrong on everything, but it certainly doesn't mean he's right on everything. Um, and when he was, I can't, I have the clip somewhere cause I wanted to talk about it. Um, he had asked a question to a leading physicist or, um, astronomer. I, I, I can't remember the name of the person. Excuse me. Um, but this physicist was able to basically shut down his argument pretty quickly. You know, I discovered this in our lab. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't. Because if you did, I would have heard about it. And not the and and it was left as, you know, not to say that you shouldn't try, keep trying. And if you do, kid, I'll be there. <laughs> you know, I'll be there. Um, but as, as of right now, no, these theories and these things that you're saying, they're just not possible. They're just not. And, um, I'll find that clip. Maybe we'll talk about it, uh, next week or, or on Friday. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, Stephen Green Street's GIF, uh, 
you know, and here's the thing, like just an opinion, but spending your time learning about the history of UFO phenomena is a great way to patiently wait for the whistleblowers to get the courage and clearance to testify. They already have the legal permission to testify. They've been encouraged, <laughs> like the they they've written it into law. So Amanda here is just straight up wrong. And Kurt knows that, um, you know, unfortunately, like anecdotal evidence and stories and trust me, bros, is only going to take really brilliant minds so far. And it's the, I mean, this little video, it sounded a lot like Michael Mataluni on the phone to me. <laughs> like I've hit a wall, man. I've hit a wall with this stuff. And even if 40 more whistleblowers come out tomorrow, okay, then what? What, so then what? What are you saying? And he, and it's be, there haven't, there has not been a whistleblower. There's been zero whistleblowers on the UFO topic, zero. Nobody has, has revealed the program where these and reverse engineered craft are no one has revealed the money where it comes from for these secret craft and reverse engineered space space alien ships <laughs> there is um there's no whistle there's nobody telling you where it is the location um who's in charge of it the scientists that are working on it um the where you can go find these things and also bring things to the table to verify that the things you are whistleblowing are actual truth nobody has done that nobody that no Grush is not a whistleblower. Lou Elizondo is not a whistleblower. Chris Mellon is not a whistleblower. These guys are not heroes. They're just guys that believed UFO stories, anecdotal evidence, secondhand stories, and trust me, bros, that's it. That's all they have. There's no materials. And if there is materials, they've been deemed very, very mundane. If there is exotic materials, there is no scientific paper that proves that these are, are exotic materials made by other intelligent beings in a way that cannot be duplicated on Earth. Or if it could be duplicated on Earth, it wasn't we can't do it yet kind of thing. Um Nobody has that. Nobody. Not UAP Mike. Not Tubacabra. Not like, not Lou Elizondo. <laughs> not Sky Fart News. Not King Milk Fart. Nobody has any evidence. Not Linda Moulton Howe. Not Ross Colthart. We're still waiting on the craft so big that it can't be moved. This guy can, can end. This guy can get Kurt Jimungle back right now. <laughs> Tell them where the fucking craft is, Ross. No, you're not going to do that. Of course not. Ryan Graves is not a whistleblower. Like, none of these guys are whistleblowers. The closest one that you guys have is, is David Fravor. And... Yeah, like I said, we I mean, we played the audio of Sean Cahill talking about David Fravor and how David Fravor thought that all of this was fake. And we've gone over and over and over again about how submarines can launch transmedium vehicles, and they've been able to do it since 2004, <laughs> maybe even earlier, probably earlier. So, oh, look at this. I love how uh, he's familiar with material manufacturing. Well, come on the show, Mike. The link's there. You want to come and bring all your evidence, please do so. I'd love to have you love to have you. And thanks for watching the show. <laughs> love it. Love it. Of course he's watching the show. He can't help himself. Guy said he was taking a break and he did a 17 hour Twitter space. <laughs> I'm exaggerating and joking, of course, but it was probably close to six hours. Um, you know what? Let me see something here. So this is Mike's new account right here. 
I think, right? Pretty sure this is it. UAP late group. Mm. Yep, here it is. Seven hours and 32 minutes. When I said, I thought you deleted this, I thought he had deleted this. When I looked at it, looked for it on my phone the next day, it said that the recording wasn't there. So I apologize. He didn't delete it. It's right here. But I wasn't exaggerating. A seven hour and 32 minute space. Man, what a break. What a life. He's got to be really living it up. Um, anyway, we're not there yet. We'll get there. Um, okay. What was I talking about? Ah, yes, Kurt Um, So, yeah. You know, like, everybody hits this wall. Everybody who has, a, like, a genuine sense of rationality, um, a genuine sense of reason, comes to the exact same conclusions that Kurt does. He's spoken to everybody, and they're all, they're full of shit. They're full of shit. None of this stuff has panned out. And the deeper you get into the actual theories of these things, the science of these things, none of those things pan out either. They just don't. And, um, you know, everybody, like the three videos, again, like Go Fast is going 40 miles an hour. It's going 40 miles an hour. You know, and that's the video that Tim Gallaudet saw on a server and so, therefore, that is the thing that propelled him to doing what he's doing today because he saw the go fast on a server. That's all in Darcy Weir's film, right? Like in all the interviews that he's done. But he's admitted he's never seen a program. He's never seen evidence of a program. He's never seen evidence firsthand of you of underwater uh, USOs under, you know, underwater submerged objects, uh, unidentified submerged objects. He's never seen them firsthand. He's never been on a ship when something like that has happened. He was a meteorologist who saw a, a video of parallax and thought it was alien. And that set him off down the rabbit hole. Like it has many people. It's wild, man. Absolutely wild. Um, yeah, Mike can't provide any evidence, man. Uh, he is, yeah, one of the worst people to talk to because he just can't stay on topic. He can't answer any questions. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, let's check out what else I wanted to talk about. Sorry, guys. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so... couple other clips I wanted to go through here is um, <laughs> here is just I'll just let this clip play and, and we'll talk and about it after but this is classic Ross Colthart uh, this is you know on News Nation or is it yeah News Nation all right again fair use we are critiquing the videos we're sharing this covered under fair use and allowable by law and here is Ross Colthart. It's the story of with, what happened with Tim Burchett to Jesus <laughs> after he was resurrected. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And then, Tim, before I bring you in on this, I, I, I also like Ezekiel 1, 4 to 6, quote, Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it. Now, I know there are lots of references in the Bible that sound extraordinary, paranormal, <laughs> and anomalous, but I guess to my very biased ear, aren't we talking there about the possibility of non-human... Whoa, we just got a huge admission. Huge admission. Listen to this. 
paranormal and anomalous. But I guess to my very biased ear. I guess to my very biased ear. So there you go. A confession from Ross Goldthart about how very biased he is. So he's not using rationality. He's not using discernment. He's reading the Bible on a right-wing news network with a right-wing lawmaker who has muskets in the fucking background. This is your expert UA UAP, Mike? This is your guy? This is your guy, Skyfart News? This guy. This is your guy, UFO Jesus. <laughs> All of you guys that put UFO in front of your names, man. It's so funny. Mm. This is this is a cult lead by led by biased people. Right there, he confessed. God, I gotta hear it again. I, he confessed. While reading it, read the Bible more, Ross Coulthard. Now, I know there are lots of references in the Bible that sound extraordinary, paranormal, and anomalous, but I guess to my very biased ear, aren't we talking there about the possibility of non-human intelligence, flying saucers, UFOs, Tim? <sighs> Look at this shit eating grin. You know how he's going to answer that, Tim Burchett. He was, he's already been talking about Ezekiel's will in the halls of Congress. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing and it's gross as fuck. It's selling a shit ton of his books. It's got him this nice job here on News Nation all the way from Australia. He doesn't even have to fucking come here. He could do it all the way from over there. Because, hey, shit, he probably doesn't have to be held to any sort of journalistic standard in Australia for an American news network. So if he does report absolute batshit crazy stuff, not like he's they're going to extradite him. <laughs> Mike, this is so stupid. So incredible. So um, according to his very biased ear, that means that it could be aliens and yada, 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 yada. He compares all these things to the UFOs. And that's exactly what he does when he listens to Ryan Graves. That's exactly what he does when he listens to Lou Elizondo. That's what he, this is exactly what he does when he does it every time. Every time he gives us a story, uh, we get this thing. Oh, look, we've got UAP Mike here. Let's see. UAP Mike, you're on the show. I'm here to tell you about all the evidence I have. I'm dropping mad evidence tonight. I think you used that word, right? Evidentiary evidence. And I, I just don't know. Like, <sighs> I feel like you picked up that word somewhere on like the back of a cereal box. Right. Okay, just, so let's let's add some context. In a space, I said evidentiary evidence. I misspoke. And UAP Mike now uses that as some sort of barometer of my intelligence. And, and every time he comes and starts talking, this is the new thing, is the evidentiary evidence. Okay, Mike, so I said evidentiary evidence. What are the big truth bombs you're dropping tonight? Well, Lou, I think you have a you, you demand for empirical evidence, right? Not realizing that we're dealing with a phenomenon, and that's mm. the issue. Okay, okay, when you deal with a phenomenon... There are issues establishing evidence, but that does not mean that a phenomena doesn't exist. Have you ever heard of third spacing? Do you know what that is? That's a medical phenomenon where water gets into the interstitial spaces, okay? We can't mm -hmm. adequately explain the phenomenon, but we know it happens, and we still have to account for it. How do we That's know it happens, Mike? Because it happens in surgery, and patients die if it doesn't get addressed. Oh, okay. So when you cut open a body, you can see it happen. 
there's yeah, actual it's, evidence it's, it's, in your hands, right? Like it's physical. You could touch it. You could measure it. It could be put in a lab or looked at under a microscope or through a series of X-rays or or no. MRIs, right? No. No, that's not how third spacing works, my friend. Okay, so how do you, so what, this just, you see this in, in, in surgery, right? I'm assuming? Generally, yeah. Okay, so my point is, is that you, you see it. Surgeons have hands on it, right? Surgeons see it. They okay. don't have hands on it. Okay, fine. They don't have hands on it, but they see they see they see that there's something there, right? And now it is a medical anomaly that they're probably Just working like on. Just UFOs are there and it's happening. No, no, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. How do you not see yes. that? It is. It's not. It's not. In one case, you're actually cutting open a person and you're seeing the thing in front of you and it's being corroborated by other surgeons cutting open Corro people. Corroborated? Yes, it's being corroborated by other surgeons doing the same procedure. So, right? right there are multiple there are multiple parties confirming that. Okay. Happening. Okay. So, who scientifically can do that with UFOs or has done that with UFOs? Have science? Well, I mean, we've confirmed that UAP are encountered for sure. Wow. Have um, we confirmed the that? Arrow report. Yeah. I mean, there are unresolved UAP cases. But those are, are UAP. But those are unidentified aerial phenomena. Aerial phenomena, correct? Right. UAP, very that good. doesn't mean they're alien or from another correct. dimension. Correct. Okay, so that could be air trash. It it's could be possible, a balloon. Yes. yes, it's possible. Okay, so what's more, what's unlikely? So a balloon is more unlikely than okay. So what's your theory? What no, is it? I would say the anomalous ones that are not realized yet are highly unlikely to just be clutter and trash for all of them but don't cases. you also understand that the arrow report also stated that the reason why there are the folders of unknowns is because there's not enough data on those unknowns to Correct. determine yeah, exactly I would what agree they are not enough data and more okay. study and money and resources need to be leveraged to study it yes or just our our instruments and our personnel need to be updated on the new policies so that way when they see these things they record them correctly and then they're sent up the chain immediately especially if there's interaction with them i think that's part of it yeah i think there's got to be there, there's no thinking right. that's that's actually in the aero report they you okay. have to report if if a pilot encounters a uap and interacts with it or engages it it has to be reported within 12 hours if it's just a normal sighting where they don't have enough information it has to be reported within 72 hours so okay my point, I think, here is that there's not enough data. So, therefore, how can you make the next leap? It's not the same as the surgical procedure you're uh, referencing. My, again, if you go back to our debate, my state, my state. I'm not was, going. No, no, no. I'm not going well, back again, to the debate. Let's go back. Idiot. Let's just I'm stick to what to we're talking about. Something previously stated that we need more data and resources, right? We need more resources, money, effort, personnel, and eyes on this topic with correct sensors that are you know, um, that are they're actually looking for things in different wavelengths, okay? And then, yeah, then once we do all of those things, and if it comes up, zero, after we've implemented all of those um, diagnostic tools, then yeah, I'm, ag I'm in agreement with you there. Then when we actually go and try and collect the data and there's nothing there, then I'll say, well, there's nothing there. But right now, we're not doing that. But we are doing that. That's exactly what Arrow's doing now with the whole report and everything that they've done. It, it can't happen overnight. It's not the flick of a switch. But as soon as the NDAA went into effect, the office was built, which takes time. The personnel was hired, which takes time. And then now the actual work begins. And these first reports that are coming out are telling you exactly that, that we have to calibrate our sensors so that way we could get the information that we need to determine what these things are and that they are not, not extraterrestrial, that they have definitely ruled out they've ruled out extraterrestrial hypothesis um they are bringing up they all of the yes they have they have ruled nasa has ruled Ooh, it out Arrow? nasa has ruled it out and arrow has, has ruled NASA's it out they have said there, said there is no evidence there is no evidence that links extraterrestrials to the things dude, that people are seeing just thinking dude do you not realize it the lack all right because the absence of evidence <laughs> is not the evidence of absence it's like the fallacious thinking 101 dude i don't know what to tell you like you just walk right into that stuff 
Okay, I just walk right into that stuff. I'm being silent because I'm looking at exa- I'm looking for exactly uh, yeah, what like if you Kirkpatrick can, said. Show me something where NASA. No, NASA has never declared the extraterrestrial hypothesis as dead. They have said that the data that they have has ruled out the extraterrestrial hypothesis so far. That doesn't mean it won't happen. It doesn't mean they're not living it. What? They're leaving the point zero one percent. That's not even scientific. How do you rule out a hypothesis so far? That's not even science. That's like Mike, dumb. No, there is no evidence that has been presented that has shown proof of extraterrestrial existence or visitation. And NASA has okay, said that. that. And Arrow has said that. All right, again, Lou, that does not disprove extraterrestrial visitation is not happening. That does so not prove what that it's proves not extraterrestrial visitation is happening? I never said that it's happening. My God, man. I said we need more data and sensors and collection to prove whether or not it is happening. Okay, so then why... Why do you do the things that you do attacking the people the way you attack them when they come with this different opinion? Why have you guys spent the last three years of your lives doing this shit? Like if all you you think, if all you think I do because I've experienced it firsthand and so have a lot of other people, Mike, and to sit here and (laughs) deny that shit or laugh about it. NASA declared the ETH dead. That's not true. You're just like... Dude, you, you see what no okay you, do you see what this guy does like he doesn't he can't you are you are a piece of work dude like you won't say what it is you agree there's no fucking evidence you're just mad and i yet, won't play your game that's all you what's want me to the do, game like, all not. i want you know is fucking game? evidence all i want is evidence mike I mean, and all i'm you, saying you is is people like you show and prove to you aliens exist like what the fuck is what is your your expectations are the problem dude Okay, so so what's your deal, Mike? Like, why are you here? People who run around claiming the extraterrestrial hypothesis is dead, like you, Mm -hmm. are 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 engaging in fallacious thinking, not realizing fallacious thinking. Yes, right. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence, Lou. Mm, Okay, so aliens are visiting Earth. I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Um. Here's what do I do know. know. Here's here's here's, here, here's what I do know, Mike. Here's Earth? what I do know, Mike. Here's what Lou, I do are know. Aliens visiting Earth? Uh, no, I don't think so. And how do you know that? Here's what I do know, because there's no how evidence you know of it. There's no evidence Earth? of it. There's no evidence of it. There's no evidence so of just it. Just because you can't find evidence, there's no that evidence. It's not happening. Uh, until I see it, yeah. Are you sure that just doesn't mean you haven't gathered enough evidence? Could no, no, definitely Uh-oh. not. Definitely so, not. So everything that's ever existed in the world that we couldn't collect enough evidence for was was wrong, right? At, at no point did ever, anyone ever get better sensors and data and collect the right data and get evidence mm. later down the road, right? I mm. guess I guess when we couldn't produce enough evidence that the world went around the sun, it must have just not been true in your world because there was no evidence of it. No, no, not at all. I, I, again, like I've said a billion to Mike, the, the, the universe is infinite. There's intelligent life out there somewhere. Is it visiting here? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And and to say that there's no evidence for that, I, I think that's a fair statement. Now, if, if evidence if pops up tomorrow, if evidence up pops evidence. up tomorrow, excuse me, can I finish on my own fucking show? If evidence pops up tomorrow, then I'll change my tune. But until then, dude, I'm sorry. There's not enough evidence that shows anything is going on right now. And you guys are taking you guys are taking eyewitness testimony. And trust me, bro. And and secondhand stories and you're attaching a reality to it and you do hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of spaces talking about this reality. You 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 come on my show. You you talking about I talk about a possible reality. I don't say this is 100 percent happening all over the the other day. I heard you say that you took mushrooms and you astral projected your body and it came out between your wrist and your elbow. No, that was DMT, buddy. That's what you said. D- okay, so DMT. Like yeah. you're you're the guy who's astral projecting. Astral project. All right. That's I'll, what you I'll said. What happened? That's what I felt you said. My soul leave my body. Oh, your like soul left soul. your body, and you saw that. Yeah. No, I felt it. Mm. Okay. It was cool, man. I I'm sure it was. It. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Are you, I think you're just jelly that you didn't get to have that experience. <laughs> no. No, I'm not jelly of you whatsoever. My issue with you is that you you imply and you and you 
you just propagate a bunch of bullshit and you propagate a bunch of theories and secondhand stories and hearsay and trust me bro instead of raising hey, Lou, the bar instead of raising the bar a little higher like here like mike i used to be just like you i used to think exactly like you exactly no, like you <laughs> okay okay yeah i did i used to sound exactly like you no i could always read and speak like clearly Okay, Michael. Right, because this conversation has shown that I can't read or speak clearly. <laughs> Maybe not the read part. Okay. Lou, you never thought like me, dude. You were always in it for the for the fame. You were in it for your show. I was in it for you the were, fame and for the show. For the topic. You were no, never like me, bro. No, you're right. You're right. Again, Michael, like all of that organizing. And by the way, I was looking at the poster. Your name's on the fucking poster for the first big phone home. I guess all of that posing you were doing behind the scenes and helping out that effort and telling me how great it was when I was first doing it. I guess that was just all you bullshitting me, right? It was a good effort, Luke. Oh, okay, it was, it was a good effort. Okay, so who else has done anything remotely close to that? What the hell is this? Do you want a like a parade or no, something? No, I don't like, want a fucking parade, Mike. But you're you you just said that I was never into the topic. All I was in it for was for the yeah. fame and for the money. If that's the case, dude, I would have just kept selling idiots like you the UFO bullshit like Matt Ford, and I'd be making money and fucking having you donate to my show every fucking day. Like no, I think people figured you out. I, that's what it no, was. no, Mike. I walked away from that money. I walked away from the channel because it was bullshit, and I was spreading bullshit. Bro, you haven't had a quality guest on your channel in like years, <laughs> Mike. Because uh, no, I don't no want to. There on. is no quality guests. There were no quality guests on my channel. Name one quality guest that I had on my show. I, I'm be honest with you. I don't know. It's very. Oh, familiar. you don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, I had Lou Elizondo on there seven times. I had Ross Coulthart on there four or five times. I had Bryce Zabel. I had uh, your buddy Richard Dolan on a couple times. I, I mean, like Mike, I talked to them all. I talked to them all, man. I, I don't understand why you... I couldn't understand why you hated me so much. What did I do to you to cause you to hate my show, hate what we were doing. All we were trying to do was build a tent for people to unite on, a fucking common ground where all of us, instead of yelling at each other, we yell at the government because we're the one, they're the ones we give our tax dollars to. They're the ones that Lou Elizondo was saying was holding this information. They're the ones that Christopher Mellon was saying they were holding this information. So what did I do? I fucking, I, I put together something that would help that. And all you did was shit on it. Why? I know. What? Are you, all why? I, did, I was on your show. What are you talking about? I Mike, the fuck why? Yeah, and, but what happened? What the but fuck? what happened after well, that? Well, first of all, I want you to take back the fact that you said all I ever did was shit on it. Because that's not That's true. all you've done. That's all you've done. Since that's you fucking, since it's Michael. Man, that's all you've done. That's it. That's all you've done is talk shit about my girlfriend, talk shit about my weight, talk shit about my show, talk about shit about how I'm in it for the money. You you riled up uh, fucking uh, Sean Rash. You riled up Joe Mergia. Like you riled Sean up Rash. all these what? fucking people to come after me. Why? Dude, you are not. I, man. Look, I'm going to tell you something. This is like, I'm, I'm going to take Lou Crew off my chest here for a second. All right. I mean, there, there you are, are you, you, were, you were one of, you were, you were the Lou Crew. You were best friends with King Milkfart. You were best friends with uh, with Fettuccine Split. With I'm just Milford, okay. Bro. Look, dude, don't don't take a word that I say <laughs> and just like add your bullshit onto it. You were friends with these guys. You laughed at the same shit. You retweeted the same memes. You treated people just as shitty as they did. And now you're on like this fucking. You think you're doing like a victory lap right now? It is the most. You're the bliss you snort, Mike, is in is is pure fucking Colombian because you think you're walking through here like you've done nothing wrong, like you've wronged nobody, like you haven't mistreated people, you and your wife. You're fucking delusional. You're delusional. And I'm not going to sit never, here. I'm not going to sit here and let you come on my show and dictate to me exactly how you've treated me and how you've treated 
hundreds of other fucking people in this space and in this community. You're a terrorist. You are a fucking a terrorist. terrorist. Yes, you right are. There. You are a social terrorist, man. You do not want i i honestly Bro, like fettuccine like fettuccine split said patients. shut up shut up like fettuccine split said you have a mental illness mike you <laughs> seriously need to take a break from this shit because the things that you do and the this things that ironic. your wife you does me i need to take a break as yeah I yeah i do I do. I think you need to look in the mirror long and hard okay i'm not break. doing seven and a half hour spaces four times a week that's you. I'm not either. What yes, are you, you are. About? Yes, you are. And Again, you know what? You already wrong. Why did you, you disappear? Why did you? Why did you? Why did you, right. why did you leave Twitter, Mike? Why did I delete my Twitter account? Yeah. The transphobia was probably the most horrible part about it. After you like doxed me, I was like, Talk to nobody my wife. doxed you, Mike. You had like, a you, know, you had man, a YouTube channel. Of, like all Mike. this hateful <laughs> nonsense going on Mike. here. Mike, like, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter hasn't taken down any of my posts, and YouTube hasn't taken down any of my posts for doxing you. I didn't dox you. Stop saying that. Your name so, was again, public. I'm say you your name was public. You did. Okay, your name on your YouTube channel um, was anyways, UAP Mike Boyle two five six three. Right. Okay. All right, Lou. That I mean, was again, the name on you your think, channel, again, right? You keep you keep doxing me, and, and again, nobody's I think it's doxing really not you. Help that you was the well name well. of your YouTube channel, right? Again, it's the name of something, and it's not something. It's that's it's not the name of something. It's the name of a YouTube just channel that you put public, ten videos on. That's just my just point. because something is public means it's public. It's Anyways, public yeah, information. Have a lot of fun. Keep Nobody's doxing you. You're a child. You're a terrorist. <laughs> You're a fucking I'm a child. child terrorist. You you are a child. You're I'm a, a child. child you have the mental capacity of a child. The things that you do in the name, <laughs> the things that you did, the things that you did in the name of Lou Elizondo were abhorrent, abhorrent. And you haven't apologized. You haven't admitted to it. All you've done is rat on your friends. I'm sorry. Everybody. You're a rat. I am so You're sorry. a fucking you no rat. Twitter. You're a rat. That's what you are. Bro, You're you a rat. got loose texts out there, bro. You were talking about Rob yes. Heatherly. Talking about Rob. Remember Mike, the Greenwald and Mike, Green Street Mike, saga? We told him yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Mike. Rat? You know who's who? You know who leaked that message? Uh, Do you know who leaked the message? It doesn't matter. You told everyone it, about the message. Do you know who leaked the message? I You're didn't tell everybody about it. You're a rat. You do you know? Who, do you know? Greenwald and do you, you got know? It wrong. Mike, answer the question. Do you know who leaked the message? You? It was Richard Butt and Rob Heatherly. I mean, if you say so, Luke. Not I say so. That's empirical fact. The tweets are out there. That's Is that fact. evidentiary evidence? You are so dumb, man. And this is why. <laughs> this is why. Like, you can't hold a candle to anyone. You can't answer any questions. You can't admit when you're I wrong. Answered lots of you questions. can't admit when you're wrong. Lou Elizondo like, lied to you. He lied to me, and he's lied to everyone. What? what did he lie to me about? He lied about sock puppet accounts. He lied about he fucking. Never lied to me about sock puppet accounts. Okay, Mike, you're such an asshole. Or you mean? Oh, he just said it wasn't him. I thought you're. Well, I thought you're saying he's telling me. Right. That's what you thought. Like you take everything so literal, man. Just listen and and try and have a yeah. conversation hey, you, here do you have a mcdonald did you ever ever have a mcdonald's fry theme sock account i know you did and you're lying no, about it no i didn't yes, you did you i didn't stalking spaces with it no mike i don't they have multiple you. account who caught me where's the evidence of that i already tweeted out the pictures of it who caught me okay tweet them I, out again tweet them out again man, not, not my tweet about again I mean, what was the evidence michael what was the evidence so mike what accounts. was what the evidence Angry oh Dolphins fan. God, what are the dude. other ones you've had? Lou reviews. Lou Mike, they're, Mike, Mike, they're How many not. Accounts you got on Twitter? Four Mike, they're not suck. You want to see? I'll show right now. Look, there's two. There's two. Mike, Lou Angeles and Lou Angeles thirteen. Okay, what about I had, the I had, Dolphins I, fan. That was the Lou. I just changed it to Lou Angeles thirteen. That's it. It was an old fucking like sports troll account. Like that was what it is. Sports and then I changed. So you were trolling. Yeah, you do a lot of trolling on Twitter. Okay. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trolling the Miami the Dolphins. Account. I was trolling the Miami Dolphins because they were the worst right. team in so NFL the only history. Two sock accounts are those, are it, huh, Lou? You've never had other sock accounts. No, like Kobe I Bryant haven't. Cheating. You're like, yeah, sure, dude. Oh, okay, well, if That's you can prove it, Mike, if you can prove it, how many sock puppet accounts have you had? 
Look, I'm going to get all the evidence. How many, evidence how many really sock puppet? See, this is what I'm saying. You never answer the fucking questions. I just showed everybody how, how many, many I have. Puppet accounts I've had. How I many like sock accounts puppet accounts do you have? With um, three and then plus one. So four? No, three accounts, right? You have UAP blog. You have UAP Mike. Okay. And then you have um, UFO um, Link Group. And then um, there is another account out there. Oh, so there's I a fifth one. Archive all the dirty little fucking shit. So you have five. You can do it on your so we're at five. Account. We're at five. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's prove four, it. Three plus one. Prove I know. It. I know math. So is just prove like it. Powerball, right? Just prove California it. California Powerball math is hard, <laughs> and I know this math is also hard. Okay. Three plus All right. one is four. No, you didn't. You said you named four, and then you added a fifth one, Mike. Go back and yeah, listen to yourself. Very, I'm not very. Go back and listen to yourself. I know. I know. You go I back and listen not. to me, bitch. Uh, All right. Are we? Are you done? Like, do you have anything of value that you want to add? I don't know. I add? came up here and you you pretend like do you. I mean, like do you have anything? Do you have anything of value that you want to add, Mike? Other than oh. just dodging questions and and focusing on on all right on here. I'll tell you, all right, I do have something of value to add. Go Fettuccine for it. Split is the fattest person on UFO Twitter. Mike, you have and two chins. Mike, you have two chins. Mike, you have two chins. You yeah, have man boobs. Like six. So what? Why are you making fun of fat people? What's your deal with fat people? Let's let's talk about that them. for a second. I love them. That's why I'm here. I don't think you do. I think you hate them if because every time people, every time you see them, them, every time you see them, you feel the need to point it out to them. No. Yeah, you do. All. Yeah, you do. Why did you just have to tell us that Fettuccine Who makes tons split of memes is about fat? fat people on on UFO Twitter? Me or Fettuccine uh, split? You do. Fettuccine <laughs> split <laughs> does. Oh my God. You've actually got to lie to your entire audience about who's making these. Who made a meme of Jeremy McGowan's stomach recently with AI? Know. Oh, that was Fettuccine Split. Okay. Yeah. And did you retweet it and like it? Oh, I loved it. It was fucking hilarious. But did okay. I make it? Did I spend any okay, time so in my why, life? Okay, why so why, why do you feel it's important? Why are why is people's weight any have anything to do with the argument you're having? Why is that no, something you always go to? The people that fat shame are the fattest. You're the one that fat shames all the time. How many times have you fat shamed me? I fat shamed. How many times you have fat shamed me, dude? The dude, only I reason I said anything shaming. about you is because of all of your fat shaming. Like that's I've what you, you just love doing. It. Fat shame me, but it's okay. <laughs> Look, okay. You know, I understand, Lou. You have a tough time mm -hmm. figuring out where. I know, such a tough from. time. You're so smart. You're smarter than everyone in the world, Mike. Thank you. You and your Thank wife you. are just. You guys are the tops. Let me tell you. That's why everybody <laughs> fucking hates you, <laughs> and you have no friends. You have no friends. You have no friends. Talking UFOs. So yep. I, mean, I don't know what to tell you. The only reason why your spaces are packed is because people want to see the train wreck that you are. Hey, come watch. You know, Buns. so I mean, I don't know what bombs know, have you, you dropped. You haven't dropped any bombs. Uh... All you've all you've done is just ad admitted and openly uh, participated in harassing, doxing, uh, making fun of people, fat shaming people, like all of the things that you're liberal. The way, I love that you lean liberal, but then you do all of these horrific. <laughs> awful things to people and you participate and laugh in all of this horrific and, and awful shit and now all of your horrific and awful friends now fucking hate you and what you what do you do you turn around and you tell everybody what they did in the private messages leah prime and take anyone's recently? i haven't spoken to leah prime in two years in two yeah, years, Leah Prime Mike. used you pretty good, man. How did she use me? Explain. Yeah, you, you trumpeted her little attack on Tupa. Remember that? You were like, something's coming. She yeah, used you she good. told. Yeah, and I told everybody exactly how that went down. Exactly. I didn't hide she it. She was like, I can use Lou. He'll, he'll she, do my no, little bit. No, she didn't lose me, use me for anything. I knew that new. I knew it was coming. And I you just said, hey, something's you. coming. So what? How did yeah. she use me? She told you so you would announce it. So what? So you, <laughs> you just explained how he's a tool and doesn't even realize it. That's Mike, awesome. Mike, how did she use me? You just what, explained it. Go Mike, back and listen to the Mike, I, it was her intention for, for... So what you're saying is that you're she so showed me... Can you shut up for a second? Can you shut up? 
what you're saying is Leah Prime used me, and the way she used me was she showed me the text messages or the 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 Discord messages, whatever messages they were from Tupacabra that were all racist. She showed me those messages in hopes that I would tweet out, "Oh, there's news coming about a certain yep. UFO you would celebrity." Her project, her little I would promote her project, project. Mike. I I but I didn't because I didn't mention her it. name. I didn't mention her name and I didn't mention any website when I did it. So if I was like, hyping her, killed, guys, big news coming. Okay. So, so what? It was her, you it was her, her story. Project, it was her story. I was just waiting for her to come out with it. Big deal. People exactly. do that all you the time. It up. You were so psyched for it. Dude. Okay. So, so how psyched. does that in, how does that prove that I coordinated with her? I said she used you. You're not. How did she do? You're, she doesn't have. But she used me to do that. That just seems like a waste yeah. of time. Okay. Nobody, so I mean, okay. So, okay. Well, so okay. Is, so let's wait, just, wait, wait. Mike. Let's just agree. She used me. I got used by Leah Prime to make a fucking tweet that something big was coming about somebody. Okay. I love this. Then You're what? Good. Then what, Mike? Now, what other connections do I have to her? Oh, and then you hooked up with KMF too, right? You you made friends with the guy you hate the most, huh? You were How like, did I, I can't hook believe up with I'm KMF. making friends with KMF. Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, you guys were buddy. You were, you were so surprised. I'll bet you if I go back, you're like, I can't believe that I actually have to take sides with this guy. But yeah. Look, when I, I thought, I've explained this. So Leah had the, 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 the information and then I was shocked when KMF released it. And I was like, wow. And and the way she told me, she was like, hey, he, it looks like he found the, the server. I was like, interesting. Okay, well, I can't believe I'm actually siding with this psychopath for about an hour. But yeah, like this information is right and it's correct. That's all I did. That's it. He wasn't my best friend. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, shit. He just exposed Tupacabra. Like, I don't like king milk fart but i also don't like tupacabra and and yeah, and, and here and here's the reason why like it, there's very good reasons why and now people could see it and to me it was like well i mean he said well, it. he should own it with that i don't disagree. okay so why are you so, so then why are you calling no, me I am pointing out lou you were used you were used by leah prime because you're so desperate Mike, to be ugly but what and nasty. is but, I'm so desperate to be ugly and nasty to a person yeah, so who hurt, made fun soul. who made fun of gay people and black people in the most derogatory way possible. And tell me, Mike, you're so innocent of this behavior. You've done it like 50 times to other people. What, make fun of gay people? I'm, no, I'm make fun that. of make fun of people that have had horrible moments or look for horrible moments that other people have had to highlight them and make them look foolish. Bro, your whole show That's is what you do. clips of people having horrible moments. Are you kidding me? What are you, you talking are about? <laughs> what are you talking? I cover what you idiots say, like Ross Coulthard and Lou Elizondo and all of your little heroes and we cover fucking the arrow report and we cover things that happen Bro, your whole show is a troll show are okay. you denying that okay yeah i'm denying that yeah oh jeez. well you know no. if you're gonna deny the fact that you're just like a jerk off on your show mm. half the time i can't help that and That's what like, are you if not, i'm you're not listen even mike mike reality. again if i'm a jerk off then what are you a jerk off <laughs> but i don't have a youtube show where i'm just okay. a jerk off you on did it. you did no, I yeah, didn't. you did. Oh, my, oh now my you YouTube... didn't? Now you didn't have a YouTube channel with 10 Wait, videos no, on saying, it? I said you were a YouTube, you're a jerk off. So were you. Your and you're channel. an influencer too, pal. You do seven and a half hour Twitter spaces. I've done one seven and a half hour Twitter <laughs> no, no, you haven't. One time. No, you haven't. Go make all your other accounts Bro, public, like and then we can go and Twitter see. We can go and wrong. see. We can go and see all of the Twitter fucking spaces you've done. Dude, You you. this is your life. This is your life. No, this is it your is. life. No, man. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, like, I, I've dude, shown married, people, I've shown like, people I do other things. Like, I have pretty, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I have lots what do you of do? interests and hobbies outside of like UFOs. What? Again, like, what? I actually am interested like what? in UFOs. You're, you have no, what are you You're interested in? What are you interested in? What are you interested in outside of UFOs? Oh, this is cool. You want to, you want to yeah. know what other stuff I'm interested in? Yeah. Um, I love military history, uh, I love baseball. Um, Who's your favorite team. baseball team? Well, Yankees, but uh, Pirates. Are well, you're a Jets second. fan. That makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I would say I love wine. Uh, I love. What's your favorite um, wine? 
I would say Barolo, maybe. Barolo from Spain. Do you have a certain vineyard? You yeah, like? Barolo from Spain. You are so smart. Okay. Anyways, um, I mean, Barolo could come from well. Spain. I love beer. <laughs> here's a here's a little here's a little phrase for you. In uh, wine, there is wisdom. In beer, there is freedom. In water, there is bacteria. Mm, okay. Um, that's great. Uh, so I have a wine degree. So there's, I have a the... WSET level two. Oh, okay. Beer, yeah. Cool. So I'm pretty good with grapes. You know, that's an interesting thing. I love grapes. Um, I like to talk about stuff like phylloxera. Uh, I like to talk mm. about botrytis, which is a, a rot that can happen on grapes that makes them sweet. Mm. So do you, how often do you hit the vineyards? Not as often as I used to. Probably. Why is that? Because uh, I am nowhere near vineyards now. Mm. That's too bad. I agree. Yeah. Uh, what so, other interest do you have, Mike? Any other personal interest you would like to know about, Lou? Uh, go for it. You tell me. No, I'm not telling you anymore. I'm not going to just spill my <laughs> life out for you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, this now, was... You've written uh, all that down. What's Pretty that? Funny. I don't know why. Why that was important to write down. Mike's hobby is drinking. No, actually, matter of fact, it's not. It's mostly uh, spitting. Well, I think your hobby is fucking taking a lot of drugs. I'd say that's definitely one of your hobbies. Well, maybe you should have pick up that hobby and you'd be less mm. of a dick. Okay. I'd be the less of the dick. Right. Okay. Mike, man. I, I... All right, Louie. <laughs> you go. Good luck with your evidence, buddy. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you later. All right. Good luck with your life and your wife and your loser ass bullshit. Ciao. <laughs> Fucking loser. What a maniac, man. What a maniac. And again, like he just shows over and over and over again. He can't stay on topic. He always goes to something else. He always says this crazy shit. Oh, you were used by Leia Prime. Okay, explain it to me. How was I used? Oh, uh, you post. You posted this thing. One post. That's using somebody. That's considered using somebody and manipulating somebody. Okay, man. I mean, in, in your world, that's manipulation. Holy fuck! It's no wonder all of your friends hate you now. It's no wonder that you and your wife are the only ones that are that agree with you. <laughs> um. I'm not here. This isn't happening. Was waiting patiently for a long time. <clears throat> how are you? Thanks for waiting. Hey, Lou. How you doing, mate? I'm doing good. I'm doing not too shabby. What's um, shaking? Did you enjoy that little chat? <laughs> no, I never enjoy a chat with that guy. But I, what, I, what? I, 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 you're gonna ask me why, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I just tell you a story just yeah. really quickly. When I was a kid, my my little sister is a lot younger than me, mm. and um. I always used to get told off by my uh, mum and dad because it's like whenever I used to play with her, I would kind of um, devolve into her age level as opposed to bringing her up to mine. Right. And I think that's kind of what, it. Either feels like you two need to get a room, or I just <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's yeah, a, a very room odd conversation. It feels like yeah. there's some it's like, always some weird personal stuff there in the background, but no, um, it, just, there's a lot of personal say, stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah, just to say, like, I, I have no clue who UAP Mike is. Yeah. And, and I don't think, uh, you know, I, I'd say, you know, 99.999 recurring of the planet don't know who <laughs> UAP Mike is. No, um, you're absolutely right. You know, probably to their, to their benefit. I'm, I don't feel yeah. as if uh, my life has been improved in any way. No. By finding that out. I don't know who Leah Prime, I don't know who any of these people is. And I think, I, I just yeah. wanted to say, what, one thing that really annoyed me, um, and I just wanted to just bring it up just very quickly is mm -hmm. the uh the argument that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence mm. and that's actually uh technically known as the um, appeal to ignorance fallacy hmm. which is to say um uh like you know you could say that about anything like fairies right or dragons Right. Just because there's no evidence of fairies doesn't mean fairies aren't real or dragons right. no. aren't real. That's an that's an excellent or point. That, or, or that you know that 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 you you know Hitler wasn't a drag star in the you know nineteen you know whatever it was. But like, <laughs> right. um, you know what I mean? It's like you can say right. anything you want. Um, yeah. Well, no. I mean, uh, that's why I've I've told him many times. Like debating you on this is like debating you know if Santa Claus is real. 
you know, yeah, we can have it. We can have as, you, as yeah. you've just now seen. The conversation always devolves into always. obfuscation, yep. redirection. Well, um, I think that's into, that's why weeds so that you're not actually talking about the very thing which you're, you're, right. you're really talking about, which right. he admitted and which everybody has to admit, which is I don't know because I don't know. Right. So the question is then, why do you believe it? Uh, right. It's a question of then attacking those beliefs but um I, I just wanted to say i'm not sure how, how how valuable these conversations are with people like this luke yeah i, I mean always much look, stronger when when you're going for the whales and not the minnows right um, right no i it, agree it with you i like, think a bit like a kind of like a high school uh playground shouting match yeah well i i i, I, I... Extending it from twitter is not necessarily uh, a, a good thing because twitter is a shit show and i think right. you know you're much more effective when when you're when you're focusing on you know the core elements of of you know how this uh how this affects people how people are being exploited i think you know yeah. as, as we talked on on uh you know in um on twitter recently you know listening to um erica luke's and uh emily uh, yeah. weird reads emily um you know they bring up some really serious issues about the state of this conversation and the kind of people that are allowed to be involved like uap mike Right. Uh, that are given a voice. Um, and I think it's time to sort of, and I know that that's kind of what you're doing, but I don't think mm. this is the way to do it. There's, you can't talk to these people. There's no, no well, I that's think that's, ex- I, look, I, I don't do it because I know I can reason with him. I do it so I can highlight how unreasonable they are. And it's, you know, we don't do this every show. And the only reason why we are talking yeah, but that's about like it. like pointing to a duck and saying, oh, look, it's a duck. No, I, I, I understand, but the, but it is relevant this weekend. <laughs> like this week has been an absolute firestorm of all of these very real issues that Emily and uh, Erica Lukes are addressing. Okay. Has imploded on itself. Has literally imploded on itself. And this guy yeah. was the right hand man to all of that stuff. And I think taking a few minutes to have him come in here and highlight how unreasonable and how chaotic his mind works, like the perfect example, like when he's talking about this anomaly within surgery and I'm like, don't you understand, like cutting open the skull and looking at this, like, and having other other surgeons also confirm that, oh yeah, I saw this. What the fuck has that got to do with? Aliens are visiting us. Correct. You know, and you like, know what I mean? it's like, yeah. How many, how many logical leaps do you need to take right. before you're talking about surgical procedures right. to somehow lend credibility? Well, it's not even some... so much like the credit. Yeah. I mean, like, it get, but it, that argument is also so flawed at the same time, like as he's literally saying it. And so that's why I think. You know, if you catch your, like, if you noticed for the last half of that interview, I was just like, okay, like, what else do you have to say? Like, what are your interests? What are your hobbies? Like, let's move on to something where maybe we could get some kind of new information about this human being that is outside of this cesspool. Um, and also just, just, to, just to wear them out. But it's like, you can't reason with these people. So if you, if you're familiar with how these conversations go, you know how to avoid them in the future. And I think, I think that's really what this is. It's just an exercise in, in, in how to sort of recognize when you're having a conversation with somebody who's not being reasonable. And that conversation is exactly what that was. Um, a hundred percent. And yeah, I agree with you. I think this show is infinitely better when we don't have people like this on the show. I just think to me this week, for me, especially it's relevant. Um, because again, like, these are the folks that have been attacking me and my girlfriend and family man, just doxing all sorts of stuff that, and, and for no reason, you know? And, and, right. and so like, you're, it, you're, it hits like a little me, differently for me. Like an intrinsic sense of fair play. And like, what's, if things are unfair, the things that really piss me off the most is things that are just not fair. It's just right. not fair. Right. Um, and, right. And no, and I account- when people aren't to be made accountable for the, for their actions, where they're behaving in a way that isn't fair or fair-minded, and I think really, yeah. you know, going back to that to the initial conversation, it should have stopped at the point where he says, "I don't know." Right. Right. No, you're right. 
you're right. And, and, but I, I think I want to understand why that I don't know then turns into, I hate you because you're telling me that my, I don't know is, well, you don't know. <laughs> I just like, well, because, because it's like, because like we said, it's, it's, it's not, it's not knowing. Right. It's believing. There's a it's big believing. difference between big knowing difference. something and believing, and believing something. It. And what you're doing right. is you're not attacking what he knows. You're attacking yeah. what he wants it to be. Right. And what right. he'd like it to be. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that when so, when people are so invested in making that little, you know, dream imagination kind of idea of the world in their heads. Yeah. You know, that, that somehow they can make it real. Yeah. Um, then, you know, then it becomes then it becomes a, an element of faith. It becomes an element of, of like I said, belief. And it's like, yeah. you know, uh, I'm getting to the point now where it's like, I treat these people as I would somebody who's a Mormon or a, or a, right. you know, a fifth day evangelist. It's like, right. whatever they're called. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. all right. You know, you, you believe what you, you believe that, 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 you know, you know, God came down and spared somebody or did something and, you know, burnt a tree and, you know, put everyone on an ark and, you know, all of, all of, uh, uh, Adam and Eve's kids fucked each other until it made the human race, you know, right. go for it. You know, if that's what you want to, right. if that's what you want to think, that's fine. Right. People believe some really weird shit. This isn't yeah. the only weird thing that people believe. Oh no, no, that yeah. is for sure. That is for sure. There's many you know subcultures like, out there. that's like... getting to the point where I'm sort of putting it into that kind of category where it's like, yeah. okay, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, lots of, lots of scientists believe in God with no evidence, right. right. You know, who's to, right. who's to kind of deny them their, their, their beliefs. But I think really what it's about is when it comes to exploiting people over those beliefs, making money o over those beliefs, um, uh, uh, you know, getting funding for things, uh, around those beliefs and then, you know, not spending it in a way that should be spent. Um, that's when it becomes problematic because then it's like you're taking people's good faith and people's ideas and trying right. to monetize that and that's where right. i think it becomes a lot darker and a lot well the thing I, I i will say the thing about uap mike is that he's not trying to monetize any of it but i think what he does is that he pushes people to the extremes of it um well he's an he, evangelist and, right he's an evangelist that's exactly right he's an evangelist and he's looking for the right people to put into the church and when you don't fit uh, the mold, especially when he thinks you should, that's when he at attacks whatever he can find, you know, that, and usually the easiest thing is somebody's looks or appearance, you know, and then it, and then it goes, you know, on from there, 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 and there. Um, and then, yeah, here we got, you know, and then, you know, then you've got the Ash and Forbes a, a of the world. Terrible, terrible human being. I mean, it's right. like, you can just, you know, it's, it's not, it's not hard to discern just from, um, you know, listening to his, his, you know, the way he speaks or the, or the things that he says or the things that he does. I mean, it's like, and, and again, it's one of those darker areas of this, of this subject yeah. where it does attract people like that. It does attract some pretty strange people because it's a fringe subject and it's like, it's, it's, um, you know, it's always been a, a magnet to, to some very, very unsavory characters, uh, throughout yeah. its history. And then, you know, as well as I do um the long you know the the, the, the long list uh, the litany of, of calumny that we've witnessed um you know in in this uh, in this subject and you know throughout the the, the sort of ufology uh community um yeah. and it's and it's you know it's very rarely called out it's very rarely um highlighted you know we have instances of people who have displayed you know criminal behavior fraud abuse um, you've got people who have, uh, which is one thing which I always find incredible, is stolen valor is one of the most, right. especially amongst military circles, is one of the most heinous acts. In, in the UK, we call them Walter Mitties, and they're, they're despised. They're literally despised. Hmm. But yet in this community, they are given a free reign. Nobody says anything. You know, we all know that these people haven't got the, 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 the accolades and they all claim to be, but somehow they, they're given a, given a pass because they're talking about aliens. And I right. find that. Well, no, very it's confusing. Well, it's amazing what we give passes for or what they give passes for, you know, to confirm their belief system. You know, they'll they'll overlook, uh, you know, extreme political behavior. They'll they'll overlook. Yeah. Like a fake war story, you know, coming in, 
you know, t- telling fake war stories uh, about, uh, you know, generals on, on, uh, God, what did he say? What did Lou, I can't remember the exact story, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Petra- I, I, you know, I, I, General I Petraeus that. showing up and, you know, unloading this, right. this gun on this Jeep. And it's like, that never happened. Uh, yeah, and yeah, he just gets a pass. PTSD, PTSD, how, right. where, when, when you know, these things yeah. are very easy to trace. You should have plenty of, you know, you can't just say these things. And, and if you're in the public eye, you know, you need to be able to sort of at least back up what you're saying a little bit to lend credibility to what you're saying. But suddenly it's like, is it OK just to say that, you know, that I've, you know, I just think isn't that incredibly disrespectful to all of those those serving, um, right. you know, men and women who do uh, have PTSD and have suffered yeah. in the most awful way. I mean, I just I find that utterly confusing. No, it is confusing. And that's why when we say, you know, Lou Elizondo's a liar, like we mean stories like that. We mean instances like that where he's shown over and over and over and over again that his stories don't check out. um, And therefore, the stories that he's telling us past that don't check out either. But there should be no reason why we should just sort of, like you said, give a pass to this person just because they believe it, (laughs) you know? yeah. You know, they, they can say anything and they can manipulate out. anyone. I mean, look what they've done to Rob, uh, Rob Heatherly and uh, and the other uh, the Sheridan guy. Um, right. Like they, they have twisted those two former veterans into like their little personal doxing duo where they go and they look for information on people. Um, and that those are the only two people that I know of just because I've gotten an email from the producer of uh, of of disclosure tonight explaining to me that that's what they were doing. They were looking for shows and people to target, but he was only using those two people to do it. Um, and it's just weird, man. It's very strange how, how people get caught up in this and they get, you know, they get to a point where they're, like I said, attacking people's families and, you know, family members that have nothing to do with this stuff. What's fascinating about the, I mean, I've been through it. You've been through it. You know, we've come out the other side. But when you chart your own journey, I think one of the things that I found really interesting is that, and I was watching a, a, a documentary that was made, a really good one. I'll try and drop a link. I'll send you a link, and I do recommend other people watch it. It's about a woman who was caught up in the January 6th uh, kind of, you know, a, a Trump movement um, about uh, the election um, who was arrested and, and subsequently, you know, got, got into quite a lot of trouble for for taking part in that event um but subsequently kind of removed herself from that sort of that 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 that, that sort of trump cult Mm. um and she talked about something which i thought was very interesting she said something which really sort of resonated with me which is that mistrust and cynicism is what you what gets you into conspiracies in the first place Mm. but then you kind of mortgage or leverage your trust to some new people who are telling you things that that you want to hear that that kind of um enable and reinforce that that initial cynicism and that initial mistrust but what she also said was that mistrust and cynicism is also the route out because Mm. what you do is you you essentially find out oh actually what i've done is you know i've been mistrustful of one organization or one body or the them or the they or whoever it is that's behind the thing that's that's you know that you're you're frustrated or angry about and conspiracies are always unhappy things. They're never happy things. They're always, you know, very serious, very world changing and, 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 and usually quite, you know, uh, depressing. Mm. Um, but what, you know, what, what they were saying is, is that, it, 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 is that, you know, by, by leveraging your, your mistrust, you essentially just start making excuses for people. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the you conduct yourself in a way that you would never do in normal life and you give people uh, chances that you would never do in normal life. Like if someone lied to you in your personal life multiple times, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not, you know, right. that's, that's not a nice guy. I don't trust that guy. But <laughs> right. for some, for some reason, when you're into a conspiracy, because that person is telling you something that you want to hear, right. Your 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 kind of um, you, you you yeah like I say you mortgage your trust out to, to, to some you know to that person essentially, um, and it, you know you're 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 essentially um, you're doing the very thing that you 
that you that, that that's almost paradoxically opposite to the very thing that got you into that conspiracy in the first place right right no it's true no you make great points and i agree with you i agree with you um I think, uh, yeah, it's, like I said, it's not something that we're going to do often. Uh, this week in particular, I think it's just incredibly important because it's just, it's so funny how the no, community, I, I get it. and I hope you don't, you know, you don't see it as a, no, as no, 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 criticism. not at all. I mean, maybe it is, but it's, it's, I just think the show's so much better when it's, I agree, agree, agree a hundred percent. It hasn't got like idiots on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And that's why we usually don't, don't have the idiots on anymore. Um, you know, we don't go looking for the interviews with idiots. Uh, they just kind of show up sometimes, you know, like Ashton Forbes here is showing up in our, uh, in our chat. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, like that be given yeah. the time of day they're just not nice people and, yeah you know, they're terrible like, they're terrible people house, why would you let them in your podcast right but also like if you don't know who this person is and you're new to my show and you don't know who he is you know you also should be aware that like this is a person who believes that an airplane was transported teleported by u.s <laughs> technology <laughs> to an unknown location and oh by the way it only transports parts of the plane uh, it's right. technology that hasn't been perfected, so we're just testing it out on innocent airplanes. And, oh, and we haven't done it since, so there's that too. Um, yeah, but yeah, so keep keep on pushing that bullshit there, Ashton Forbes. <laughs> uh, so when people come in here like that, yeah, I, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. They can say whatever they want um, because I've just shown. You know, I think in, in two guests that we've had here, you and UAP Mike, what's a logical conversation versus what's an illogical conversation? Yeah, what's I, it just, like, I just think what's it like to, it's not worth the energy or the time. Definitely. That, well, like I said, you know, it doesn't happen often. It shouldn't, hopefully it doesn't happen again, but it might. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, again, like I always, I, I'm going to take the good out of this. And I think, again, highlighting the, the differences between talking to a cult member versus talking to someone rational and highlighting that I can have that rational conversation. We can listen to each other and have dialogue. Right. And, and I'm not the one on being things, irrational. Like, I can be critical of you. For and sure. Make Definitely. You, you, know. you know, being critical of my show is okay. It's when you go after my girlfriend that I'm not okay with. Right. Critique the show till you're blue in the face. It makes me better. It makes the show better. Um, you know, and like, I remember we were getting things. The, the biggest thing I remember, like these guys hated about me was our discord. It was a Discord that I never. I don't do Discord. I'm awful with the with the app, and that you know, I'm like, why? Why do I need another place to message people? Like that to me was <laughs> the whole thing about it. Uh, but we when the when the Discord was started, it wasn't started by me. It was started by the fans of the show, and early, just like in all Discords. Um, you know, there were no rules and because there were no rules, people felt it was okay to talk and treat to each other however they want. So then, you know, we got a whole bunch of criticism for that. And I was like, okay, shit. Okay. Now I got to pay attention to the discord. So let's write a set of rules. Let's put in some mods. And it was fixed within a week. We had that fit the, the, the discord under control. Uh, but you know, like you think rational people would look at that and go, oh, shit, okay, hey, at least they tried, but not these guys. No, they just kept going on and on and on and on about this Discord that just didn't exist anymore. Um, you know, it's just, it's wild, man. It's wild what they do. So, again, just highlighting the differences in these kinds of conversations. I, I It's not something I want to do every show, but I think it's important to show every once in a while, like, how... Yeah, like, like I said, I get it. But how it's, it is. But yeah. 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 But, hey... Thanks for calling in the show. Thanks for the feedback. I appreciate no it. Worries, I appreciate conversations like this. And yeah, welcome anyone who wants to have a conversation like this. Let's have it. Um, but yeah, thanks for being a fan of the show and being patient with today's idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I do appreciate it. Yeah, we've got a All lot right, of them in the chat easy. now. All right, you too. Ciao. Um. All right. So yeah, that was, I guess the call in portion of the show. I still had some other things I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, since this, this, this is a, uh, a, all we do is troll on this show. Um, I wanted to address this cause we did get to talk about Leah prime. And I know a lot of people don't know who this person is. Um, you know, and honestly it's not important in the grand scheme of anything. <laughs> um, 
you know, but I can tell you right now, as much as I don't like Leah Prime, I don't think she's this grand master planner behind the scenes pitting people against each other. If there's evidence of the con, I mean, there is some evidence of that. Obviously, she's okay. Let me take this back. So she has she has coordinated with people like King Milk Fart and UAP Mike and this guy Carl and all, all these people that are all connected. Again, the Spider Man meme that I made for, you know, this right here, like this meme where it's just all of these people doing all of the same tactics, you know, saying the exact same things about each other and, and executing these things in the exact same way, depending on who the week's target is. Um, and so that's what this is. And that's, I think who she is and how she plays a, 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 a part in this. Um, you know, she's been attacked and then she's attacked back. Um, I personally, yeah, as soon as I found out that she was friends and talked to King Milkfort all the time, like that's when I separated my relationship with her because it didn't seem right. Like she knew exactly the terror and the bullshit that I went through with these people. And here she is being buddy buddies with them. She knows them by name. She goes to UFO conventions with them. And then when I ask her, Hey, is this, this person? And she's like, Oh, I don't know. And then a minute in the same minute, the next thing out of her breath is, oh, his first name's Mike, but I don't know his, you know, the, his last name. Like, wait, yeah, you do, you know, um, like, I don't know, man. It's just, she's, she's not, she didn't, she, she, she did. And then she, she, she pits people against each other, but she isn't a mastermind of this stuff. I, again, I think a lot of these actions, a lot of these things that people are doing are doing it because they're self-motivated because they, uh, they think that what they're doing is the right thing. They're doing it. That's why they call themselves the Lou crew. You know, that's why they have a, you know, a secret server with, you know, with a hit list of people that they're going after. Mike was in these servers. Mike was in the Lou crew. And now he's walking away from all of that and thinking like, Oh, my hands are clean of all of this behavior and all of these tactics and all of this gross shit. I'm sorry. No, dude, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that without people, without, uh, without me calling you out on it. I'm, and I'm fucking calling you out on it. Like you don't get to just be the fucking hero because you're now all of a sudden spilling the beans on all of your scumbag friends. Like that's not the way this shit works. And if this was, you know, uh, you, you would be literally spilling. You're a rat. You'd be spilling the beans to get your sentence reduced. If this was like a, a legal situation, um, but yeah, we got one more caller. Let's see who this is. It says hi, but, uh, yeah, I'll be ready here. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. hi. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I get it. All right. The show's <laughs> about to end, so we'll get you some food. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Love you. Okay, that was my girlfriend. She's hungry. <laughs> and that's the show, you guys. All right? Like, the lady says show's over. Show's over. So, it is what it is, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm sorry if the last half of the show got derailed by by dummies. Uh, or dummy, singular. Uh, I guess I could add plural to that. Um... I could pluralize that rather only because, you know, we had a couple in the chat, but that's okay. Thanks for the views. <laughs> um, Art and Paranormal, thank you so damn much for being such a killer mod. Um, today, I'm sure was a was a busy one. Uh, and if you notice that nobody got blocked, everybody could say whatever they want, just as long as it doesn't get uh, too crude or personal. Uh, nobody's voice is withheld back here, unless you're just being a scumbag. If you're being a scumbag, then we're going to block you from the chat. Um, but yeah, feel free to spew whatever nonsense you want in the chat. Um, you guys will be doing a space, I guess, on Wednesday. I'm not sure what the topic will be. Actually, I think I do know what the topic will be. I'd love to talk to B. Uh, and some of the um, papers that she sent me 
Uh, I'd like to go through them in a space and talk to her about them in the studies and uh, the people that are quoted in these uh, these papers that apparently prove you know don't prove the existence of aliens and extraterrestrials, but definitely imply. Um, so I think we'll, we'll we'll talk about that stuff. So she she wants to come into the space and we can calmly go over that stuff. I think that could be cool. That could be a lot of fun. So uh, look forward to that on Wednesday. Um, let's see here. What else? Want to say? Yeah, please don't forget to smack that like, share, and subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, ring the bell. That way you're notified anytime we go live, which is Monday and Friday, 3 to 5. Uh, if you really love the show, we've got links in the description below to our Patreon. More than welcome to donate to the show for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, super chats, of course, always welcome. Thank you to anybody who super chatted. I don't think anybody did today, which is cool. Uh, but I didn't want to miss it in case we did. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Love you guys. Um, and yeah, we'll see you Wednesday and Friday. Until then, have a good week. Have a good week. Thank you for tuning into Lou Reviews and helping raise the bar. We'll see you guys. Peace out.